Hey guys, what's up? JK with Porn Reboot here. Today I'm going to be talking about how pornography affects your childhood. Now, do you remember the first time that you were exposed to pornography? As in, was it as a child? Now, this is a topic I've rarely discussed, but as I get deeper into my coaching work, I've discovered the critical importance of coming to terms and understanding when our exposure to pornography began and how it impacts our life. And I'll use myself as an example. So my first exposure to pornography was when I was around seven years old and I distinctly remember it. You know, my parents were busy professionals. They frequently left us in the care of older cousins who were usually teenagers. And one of these cousins lived with us and she was kind of like a cousin slash nanny. And one day while playing hide and seek with my sisters, I had hid under the bed in my cousin's room. And that's when I found a comic book. Some of you are familiar with this story that was pornographic in nature. And you know, I was shocked by what I saw, but I was also strangely thrilled by the images. And instinctively, I knew that it, it wasn't something I should have been looking at. Now those images till today, this very moment, have not left my mind and they formed an indelible, permanent mark on my memory. So it's, it's really easy to get exposed to pornography as a child, especially these days. Now, that incident happened over 20 years ago. This was long before easily accessible internet, before smartphones, before tablets. Yet, it wasn't too hard to get exposed to pornography even back then. You know, so there are two main ways that you were exposed to pornography as a child. And if you're a parent, well, this might be helpful to you. The first way is through your parents' porn stash, okay? <laughs> now, this is fairly common. You know, I was 13 years old when I found my father's porn stash under his bed, and I that's when I learned how to masturbate, and I would borrow his magazines over and over again. You know, the second way is through exposure by a family member or a friend, maybe from school. And that's another common occurrence, you know, Playboy magazines were passed around in my high school and eventually I accumulated a small stash of my own. <laughs> now everyone has different reactions to pornography, you know, the first time that we're exposed to it. So for some of us, you know, it's exciting. It might have been exciting for you, it may have been stimulating, while for some other people, it may have been shocking and confusing. So I'm curious as to <laughs> which it was for you, let me know in the comment section below. Now your age also plays a huge role in the reaction that you have, you know, so you're more likely to feel stimulated or excited in your teens than, you know, when you were six years old. You know, your religion, your family values, the society you grew up in, all of those things play a role as well. I've seen conservative men who, while they were teenagers, were shocked at pornography and even reported, you know, they told their parents that they saw porn, you know. But growing up in a family that's open-minded and promotes open communication has an impact as well, you know, because a parent's reaction to finding out that you were exposed to pornography has a very severe impact on your interaction with porn. Now, in my case, my mom, you know, once decided that she was going to, you know, she was done with my room being a dump and, you know, she decided that she was going to thoroughly clean it up whether I liked it or not. And she went through everything. Now, I was 14 years old. So, inevitably, <laughs> she discovered my collection of Playboy magazines. And she told me, she was like, okay, that this offense is so egregious, which means it's so bad, that only my father could handle it. Now, my father was a super busy man. You know, he, sometimes he found it easier to whoop me to get his message across, you know? So I was terrified. I didn't want to get into it with my dad. And my mom knew this. So the next few days, these were the longest, like two, three days of my, my teenage memory. You know, I, I, start, I, just, I would sit waiting to just hear my dad's voice just yelling for me. But fortunately, you know, my mother never reported this incident and I never got into it with my dad. So, you know, she gave me back the magazines and told me to throw them away. And I can't remember what I did with them, to be honest. <laughs> I think I still kept one of them. But 
my point is that incident didn't stop me from looking for pornography it didn't stop me from masturbating obviously in fact it actually seared into my mind the fact that looking at a naked woman was bad and that there was a punishment for it and it made me feel very guilty it made me feel a lot of shame whenever I masturbated which was pretty much every day for the next decade pretty much okay so to understand your current struggle with pornography it's important to identify why you were using pornography as a child and I found that there are four main reasons why you were using pornography as a child and the first is to learn about sex okay so I remember being in high school you know I was talking about sex with a group of friends and I was just laughing my ass off when <laughs> one of the more popular guys in class he claimed He's like, yeah, you know, there's that guy who says he's had plenty of sex. He said that the penis never fully entered the vagina. Only the head of the penis did. And this was hilarious because, you know, back then in the days of magazine, they, they never showed full penetration. You know, it was only the head of the penis they showed going into the vagina because there were pictures and then everything else was left to your imagination. So this is an incident. It's funny, but it illustrates just how misguided we can be about sex. Now mind you, this guy who made this assertion, he was a 17 year old straight A student, he was smart, and we all knew from images in our biology books that a penis was fully capable of penetrating a vagina. Yet the image of pornography had replaced this biological reality that he knew. That's how powerful pornography is. So even today, you know, I've spoken to grown ass men who I've had conversations with them, with clients, and they have no idea what some of the average statistics, statistics excuse me, on sex are. Let me give you a few statistics about sex, okay? First of all, most female porn stars have had cosmetic surgeries on their vaginas to make them seem aesthetic, okay? 90% of female porn stars have breast implants. 100% of pornographic stars in men's magazines, okay, if you look at them on paper, they've been enhanced by Photoshop, including on social media. And then the average man's penis, regardless of your race, okay, is 5.8 inches. The average male porn star's penis is 8 inches. Majority of porn star sets also have hardcore drugs available, and it, it's done so that the pain of multiple sets, you know, like cutting and then shooting again, is mitigated so that the women are numbed from the pain. See, most guys think, oh, porn is just what you see, but you forget that it is directed. A scene that looks like it took five to eight minutes, if it's not an amateur scene, could have taken hours. And the woman's vagina is, you know, it's human tissue. So she takes drugs, sometimes hardcore drugs, to numb it. 95% of men who are in pornography, that's male porn stars, actually use performance enhancing drugs, Cialis, Viagra, and the like. Okay? So these are some of the things that we miss and we don't understand. And this is the power that pornography has over our mind as children. So my point today is that it's very important at some point during your reboot to go back into your past and identify how pornography affected your childhood and how that affects you today as well. I hope that makes sense. So that's my message for you today, brothers. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to learn more about my system, I suggest starting with my free ebook, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. There's a link to it in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And when you do, click on the little bell icon so that you can get notifications every time I release a video. Videos are released twice every week. Have a wonderful day.